Kassé Memokun, Executive Director, Quebec Kassé Women Development and Resource Center. I am the convener of this program. For quite a number of years now, uh, I have been working with the Women Resource Center. I've been putting together the Niger Delta Women's Day of Action for Environmental Justice. This program today is called Niger Delta Women's Day of Action for Environmental Justice. It is a movement or an initiative that started six years ago because a group of women came together and said we should identify a, year, a day in the year that Niger Delta women can sit back together and reflect on issues of environmental challenges in the Niger Delta. We want to take over the space is that we want our contributions to development at all levels, family, community, state, nationwide. We want that contribution to be recognized. I think one of the best things that has happened in recent times is the awareness on the need to protect our environment. And this program is one of such bringing awareness, especially to the people of the Niger Delta. Generally before now, when I was quite young, you realize that people don't die young. Today, life expectancy has actually gone down because of environmental pollution, okay? Before, when anybody dies, you know that the person is old. Now, the reason why they are living old is the same environment that we live in. But the reason why they are living old is because there were no sicknesses that time. And they were eating seafood. If you go to hospital now, doctors will tell you, look for seafood, eat snail, eat uh, vegetable, eat these ones. Those were the things that our people in the Niger Delta were living on. So they had the best life expectancy ratio. But today, the environment is polluted. And so it has reversed. Instead of being, having the best, we are now the worst. So what this program is telling us is, you know, building feminist economy, you know, for for environmental restoration is to enable women to take leading role on issues of environmental management and protection while they also you know respond positively in terms of agricultural development around the environment. I don't think that God who created marriage created it to be an institution of slavery where one person becomes a slave of the other person while the man is growing and uh, expanding in society, the woman is losing weight and being degraded. I don't think that is marriage, that is slavery. If that is what you want to go into in the name of marriage, well, good luck. That is not marriage. So, feminism is simply an assertion by women that they are equal to men. It's that simply that no human being to trample upon the rights and that nobody is a slave of another person. That's simply feminism. That when you have three, four children, two men, two women, both of them should go to the same type of schools and have the same opportunities in life. Yes. Not one of them should be in the kitchen watching plays while the other one is practicing football outside. That is simply feminism. Uh, where do they come from? Ah, uh, they come from Lebanon. Ah. You see fish cash. Eh, uh, some small, small fish, one, not fish, one. Take ice here. You want to see my fish? No. Now. Why? Who is one now we put the whole thing that lives? Who will catch this kind of fish or river? You suppose you eat fish or river so that it will grow. If I don't eat this fish, go ask. Who's fish now? Yeah, I see them. No, now. You can think of the baby. As you remove this one from the heat in the day, if you give her after some time, it will grow. It will grow again. It will grow seed producement for inside the river. And if you go, if you go, you will see the woman in the shop. You will see the woman, you will feed them. You will go make money for yourself. You will go make economical rich. And you will go carry on this one small fish for the river. You know what? The Nigerian state has been oppressing the Niger Delta people for 70 years. 
taking their oil, taking their oil money and polluting the environment. And unfortunately, the women suffer the pollution the more than the men. My name is Ngozi Azuma, the coordinator of Egi Human Rights Environmental Initiative from Iroma, Onega River State. I'm talking of the gas effort in our own community. The gas effort has spoiled our land. Before we are working, our offices, our land, when we cultivate our food, we eat something. Our food, our soil is very rich, but now our soil has been defined because of the gas. I have some things here to demonstrate and to tell you people the real truth that our land has been defined by the gas or by the oil, but the company are not compensating us. Even taking care of herself, you can look here. This is how our cassava used to be. When you go to the farm now to approve, this is how the step will be. You walk out all over the farm to see where the big cassava to do, so that you will approve to gain something. You will not say anything. Tell me a woman with five children, or even if you are a lone self, to go to the bush and approve this type of um, cassava. You walk out the whole, you cannot sunset whatever you eat. And this thing is making some women who have children. When they see someone who is frying Gary, they will go and tell you, say, give me that seed that you used to throw away. They will pan it and fry it to make sure that they feed their children. See how the okra used to do. To tell you, say, our soil, the oil has defined it. When the okra start to grow, after sometimes it will reduce. When you reduce, go and check it, it changes to yellow color, telling you that there is no nutrient, there is nothing inside for the soil, the okra leaf or the root to take and germinate. And you see that women of Onega or women of all this rural area, we have patterns of getting money because farm is where our office is. When you, up, when you plant, first of all, you, up, you uproot okra. After you sell okra, you cut vegetable to sell. After you cut vegetable to sell, you unplug all this in maize and sell. Cocondia and do. Cassava is the last thing. But now all this thing, you cannot get them again. The, the worst part of it be in cassava land, before you reach six months, you see that the color will change yellow. This is the nature of the color that we even cocondia. This is how the nature will change. Telling you that everything has rotten. When you put hand on the button to see what is happening, you will see maggot inside. Because of that maggot, telling you say there's nothing you can uproot. See the seed. See how the, uh, the seed of our food. Why we used to plant them in the yard so that we can plug it and sell. There's nothing for women to use and trade their children. See the cocoon there. Something like this, how can you carry it and go to the market and sell? Who will buy this from you? So in all, because of time, I'm telling you that we are suffering. Many people who have children now are regretting by having many children because we don't talk of education again. We only talk about feeding. And you know that in a family, a woman has 85% contribution to money because if a man has money, he will spend it outside and spend some inside. But all women focus their money to train their children. And all we are calling government or not, well, this is not governmental to come and take care and recruit women so that had I know will not be at last. So every woman that has children and those who don't have, because everybody eats. The effects of oil pollution is different between men and women. Women suffer the deprivation of oil pollution far, far more than men. In Ogunila, for example, immediately a woman marries into a family. The first thing that is done is that she's given a plot of land where she immediately begins to engage in farming activities in order to come contribute to the, to the home. As we know, the Niger Delta has suffered environmental uh, exploitation. So it is important that women get to understand where they stand. And that is why I, that is why I am speaking here today. You have a lot of work to do. One way is that you can initiate things to talk about and things to do. If you are not initiating, you can escalate things that have been initiated by others. Which means, for example, I have written a book about oil TV. Now, you, don't, you do not have to write your book. So if you pick up that book and you read it, you can begin to campaign based on what is in that book. That means you are escalating it. The best in this solidarity and you must continue every year because that is the way that the world will know that we exist 
and you support us just as we support you. <laughs> Oftentimes we've heard statements like behind every successful man. Why would he be behind? That is why Nigeria and Africa is behind. Because we have kept women behind. We find ourselves as the people of the Niger Delta, people that have been repressed, whose environment have been degraded and continually be degraded as to speak right now. And perhaps because you are not from Nigeria, you feel unconcerned about what happened at that Santa Barbara River on the 29th. You refuse to speak up because you say, I'm not a Nigeria man. Perhaps you're not from Sangana, where the Gassi occur. You refuse to stop because you say, I'm not from Sangana. Perhaps you're not an Ogoni man or Ogoni woman. So what happened with Ogoni? You refuse to speak up because you do not see yourself as part of Ogoni. One day, it will get to your community. And by that time, I pray that there will be nobody to speak for you. That is why, as Niger Delta women, we must stand in solidarity. Whatever happens to any community, in a do, a Kwaibo, Delta, Rivers, and Constituency, wherever you are, talk about it, protest about it, let them know that the people of Niger Delta, even though we may differ in our tongue and our tribe, we stand in solidarity as one people. People must survive. We must stand together. Time will come when there will be what I call environmental genocide. We will not live in the Niger Delta if we continue this at this pace. We will be here. And I think the government will be happier that people in the Niger Delta all die or run away just so that the oil and everything that they want to extract remains for the government. As women, what do we do to change the economic situation in our environment, in our household? What do we do? I encourage all your women not to ever keep quiet, to stand up against any form of oppression, any form of pollution in this part of what my message to, to women in the rural areas is um, is quite is simple and straightforward. It is that they must come out of the cocoon. Women are currently uh, in some kind of cocoon. Cocoon established by the state, established by our legal system, established by our political system, established by our religious system, our traditional system, our cultural system, even our social system has reinforced the fact that women are subservient to men. Women are the weaker sex. That is what our culture has done. What women need to do is reverse that trend. Let go of those thinking, those mentalities. Women need to understand that they are as important as any other person, any other male person. They need to stand up and take the driving seat. Of course, there are barriers. I never said it was going to be easy. Nobody says that fighting for liberation is easy. When the slaves fought for, for an end to slavery, it wasn't easy, right? The women need to know that they need to come together and fight. And when they fight, the process of winning has already started. And trust me, there are numerous, numerous, countless number of men who are willing to join the cause of women and fight for the total liberation of the mass. Why do we have poverty in our land? Of which climate change also has the language, right? So why is poverty so persistent in our climate? And so for us at Oxfam, we believe that from studies and from all the research we've done, we understand that in the policy is the bedrock of poverty. It's not like there are no resources in the, in, in, in the world or in our, in, our, in our environment. There are resources, but only a few people have access to those resources. And that is what Oxfam preaches everywhere we go. How do we ensure that policy holders make deliberate efforts to take resources away from those who have too much and put it in the hands of those who have less? Niger Delta Women's Day of Environmental Action. And uh, this is a seed first stand where community women are trying to see how they can prevent the ecosystem, the, our environment due to impact of uh, climate change. We've seen that uh, the impact is obvious, it's everywhere. Uh, some seeds are all gone, some medicinal leaves that we used to use in our homes are no longer seen. Now, Kebekase is trying to see how women can preserve those seeds that are medicinal to their 
to women by planting them, by preserving them, so that it doesn't go out of extinction. My name is Esther. I'm from Okwaibom State. Okay. This living adult is called Utebekpo. Utebekpo. Yes. It's a very nice leaf in the sense that, for example, a child was like walking or playing the, along the line, the child just long. Then what you would do is just to cut off the sleeve and squeeze it in your hand and make the child to inhale it. You see, the child is going to snitch. And when the, the child snitch out, the, the child is going to restore back to life. Here, we have this substance here. Perhaps I can open it for you. This is what we call the blood tea. This is guinecon leaf made into tea. This is a blood builder. It's a blood purifier. It assists the blood to work better and to detoxify the effect, the soot in the bloodstream out. This is something that we just discovered and it's, you know, working magic in improving the health after all the effects of pollution. Soft leaf. Women are suffering of lack of uh, child, child building. If you can get it more, more many than this, you can use it and squeeze it, put an uh, egg, native egg, and pump it. Maybe as time goes on, towards three months or four months. If it is natural, the woman can conceive. There are four different types of herbs here. The first one I'm holding is what I call antibiotics, is a herbal antibiotics. What this herb does here, after preparing, it helps the kidneys. It helps to manage your kidneys and also cleanse your kidneys if there are any infections there. Like some of the persons that are suffering from this soot effect, this herb can help them to clean their system. This herbal herb you are seeing here does not only help to clean your kidneys, it also helps your liver. By the grace of God, I have used this herb to help people that have liver issues. And it has worked for them, and they are alive. My name is Ingo Sankuma, the coordinator of a human rights environmental initiative from Edenland. There is a question I want to answer, uh, or ask our pastor who teach our moderator who teach. He said that women should come up from master's level. And when we go, we should gather women so that we will arise and fight for our rights. I from any, there's one second time we, you know, we went to this nobody where our last question is taking over all our land. We quarrel with them, they say we should go, that they will set women. No way. They will say we should come for peace demonstration. They will speak over it again. They bring out their dog and cover everywhere. Call police, lock their gate. We stay outside. We are seeing peace demonstration that we do not want to fight. After all said and done, they did not do anything. Right, and when they say they want to do something, they call men that they are giving to do scholarship to or children. In the community, we are the millions of children. What would took uh, this scholarship to do? Sometimes there was a video I was sometime online. And viewing to that video, I was not so satisfied with the video. And I think it's a, it's a good place for me to share the video. A lady was like, she was crying. That heaven see, she has been a feminist, and because she has been a feminist, so many things have gone against her in her world. And she was begging, she just needs to go married. She just needs a man that I will wash your clothes, I will cook your food, I will do this. Man, that thing that you want me to do for you, I will do. So it's just a very patient means for me to share the experience and as well advise me the men among the house. So we get that we feminists, we are not just the way you look at us, not the way you define we the women to be that we are arrogant and we are this. Thank you. It's, it's common. 
any time, in fact, when the slaves in the United States started fighting the slave masters and asking for their freedom, they were called demons for doing so. Any time any person tries to break away from the yoke of oppression, that person will be called names. They have not even started calling you names. They call feminist demons, uh, they blackmail them, and so on and so forth. In this community, they kept doing all they don't by bringing down streets, deforestation, burning farmland, spraying plastic and nylon here and there into the river, and even the street they fed water from. They scattered and littered in every way. The whole village was polluted. On the one day, right, no. they chased daughter who went out to study abroad. For the women that we are not here, well, what I would love to tell them is this. This is the time for you to rise up, take up the responsibility of becoming the woman that we are created to be, not depending on anyone to become what we are originally created. Don't say, oh, I'm a woman, I cannot do this, I cannot become, is a lie. You can become anything you want to become, even as a woman. At the end of the day, we are amplifying the voices of women. Once again, increasing the voices of women, once again, on issues of environmental de devastation and degradation, with the expectation that policymakers and duty bearers will hear and listen and take action to address the environmental problems.